Hello everybody and welcome back to the DCAC channel. Let's solve another Python question. Um, I know there uh, there is the I was I think it was like the um, daily yeah 30 day lead coding challenge. For now I'm gonna stay away from that just because uh, there's plenty of people probably doing this and I'm. I'm not even sure I want to do challenges. I am actually focused on those classical problems for now, at least. But we'll see. So um, I guess this one. So a website domain uh, like uh, discuss.leadco.com consists of various subdomains. At the top level we have .com, uh, at the next level we have lead, leadcode.com and at the lowest level we will have discuss.leadcode.com When we visit a domain like uh, discuss.leadcode.com we will also visit the parent domains implicitly Now call a um, count pair domain to be a count representing the number of visits this domain received followed by a space followed by the address an example of a count paired domain would be 9001 discuss.leadcode.com uh, again the count paired domain to be a count representing the number of visits this domain received followed by, by a space and followed by the address okay um, we are given a list CP domains, count pair domains, of count pair domains. We would like a list of count pair domains in the same format as the input and in any order that ex that explicitly counts the number of visits to each subdomain. Okay, let's uh, kind of see what what they mean by that. Uh, Nine thousand and one discuss.leadcode.com would also give us 9001 for this and this because for each of those we will also be uh, more or less like if we start let's see the explanation I guess would be the better way uh, we only have one website domain discuss.leadcode.com as discussed above uh, as discussed above the subdomain leadcode.com and the com and com will also be visited so they will all be visited 9001 times now having uh, 900 google.mail.com 50 yahoo.com one email uh, in, intelmail.com and five wiki.org the output would be 901 for mail.com because we are only well yeah exactly we get mail.com and mail.com from here right um okay so we're basically partitioning everything i guess based on those keywords and combinations of of them um let's see for yahoo.com of course we get this for wiki we get this so the base uh, base domain that we are given in the list stays the same anyway only its parts then become uh, combinations based on those values uh, explanation yes we kind of get that explanation let's see some of the notes the length of CP domains will not exceed 100 okay so we know a list of 100 max would be given the length of each domain name will not exceed 100 each address will uh, have either one or two dot characters so either one or two okay the output uh, the, the input count in any counted pair domain will not exceed 10,000 okay so the number here and the num the answer output can be returned in any order which is also pretty neat I guess uh, for me I, I'm not specialized in web development so this is kind of a nice site and I like site uh, perspective for me to put some thoughts into the into the mind of a web developer and that's that, that's why it's kind of intriguing to actually think about this problem uh, at least from from my point of view 
So let's see how we can actually handle this. Uh, the first thing, we know that we can have an auto array and it will definitely start with uh, all those domains because we know that the domains themselves will also be copied over. Now um, we also need the split, I guess it's, I think it's a string split or something like that, or just split. And of course we're getting strings here, so it's easy. Uh, and I think we can have a separator, exactly. So um, we can do something like for for domain cp domain in cp domains um, okay we actually want something like um, a mapping so for example a mapping that maps certain values to certain uh, parts and um, what else? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Let's see the, the answer here. Com, mail, intercom, wiki, org. Just org. We don't get common org, of course. We also don't get something like mail.intel.org. So um, it's a bit trickier, I guess, this question. Let's think about it. I may, I may have to kind of cut through the video midway, uh, kind of think about it, do some more stuff and then come back at it because I don't think this is going to be doable in like a 10 minute video, that's, that's for sure. But we, I think I'm determined to do this anyway. So we will need a dictionary of sorts. Uh, our dictionary would contain, uh, let's call this, well, was it count pair? Yeah. CP dictionary, count pair dictionary. It will be empty at the beginning. Uh, and now, for each of those, let's first split our um, our value from the, or basically this visit value from, from the rest of it, from the domain. Uh, this would be, let's just call it the value or visits would be um, cp domain dot split on uh, basically on an empty line. And Actually, we can basically assign both, right? Uh, the other one would be domain. And now the visits and domain are okay, but now we also want something like, um, how do we map? I still haven't thought about a, a sound way of mapping these things because I guess it's best to kind of do it again, uh, like a human would do it and kind of follow this uh, logic. So I, I know I see the list and I know, okay, there are some uh, certain values associated with each of those entries. So I'll have to map the values. We're kind of already doing this here, or at least on the way of doing that. Uh, first things first, I would go and see all the comms. I have three comms. So for com, I will, I will know, I will put a sum of all three. Uh, everything that has come, uh, basically I'm looking at the whole entry, so I will have to, basically I can, I can store the whole entry as, uh, like the whole domain as a, or the, the whole CP count pair thingy as a, um, key and value pair in our dict. And now I will be looking at everything that contains com. And this is easy to kind of do because I'll do like dot com and that's one eternity later. So um, I actually tried an approach where the idea was right, but I think we didn't, uh, I didn't really pay attention to 
how complex this can get if you're not uh, simplifying your approach. So actually from uh, instead of going backwards, I'm gonna go from the whole picture first. So we will be looking at uh, an element, we'll, we'll be splitting the visits and the domain into two parts. And now we are going to be looking at the whole element. We'll check if the whole element is in a dict. If it's, if it's not there, we'll just add the value. Then we will basically separate this part, look at uh, its uh, remainder, check the dict. If it's not there, we just add this uh, value and then and so forth. Then for the other one, of course, for the whole um, domain here, we see that the dict will not contain anything like that. For the second part, the, the dot .com part, we know that the, um, that the dict will um, contain the dot com so we'll basically just add the 50 to it and this should give us all those uh, yeah basically we can just continue with, with this approach now the only thing is that uh, i was looking at a function that will split me for example if we have google.mail.com and we split it on the first dot we'll basically just get this um and it is okay oh no it's actually perfect right because uh, this is the exact output that they're looking for and then we if we split like this we're just getting dot com and yeah i think this is what the author was actually thinking about when they um when they made this algorithm i guess <laughs> or this this problem and okay so how do we handle this for Okay, while domain is not basically uh, while this is contained in domain, so we know we are still splitting, and for the last one. Yeah, we'll still split it and then just check right right because we have like this we split first like this then we have these two uh we check this one okay then we split this and we will be splitting and then we just get this one and then no more splitting exactly so we know while there is a point or a split uh separator basically domain separator i don't know how it's called exactly uh, in our domain or URL address um, what we'll be doing is if our cpdict uh, well actually let's let's have it our domain will now be basically domain uh, no actually first we'll be doing something like if cpdict dot get and now we get our domain right uh, and if we get okay and let's have it as something like none if we get a none that would mean there is no such domain found here we'll basically just add it um, like this would be visits this is basically the base case where we didn't find anything we just put the base one else it would be the case where it actually finds a value and then we'll do something like this domain would uh, in the dict would actually map to what is already there and also adding visits uh, which would be for example in this case, we will find the .com as a domain, and we will say, uh, like in this case here, right? It would not be a none. It would, there will be a value of 900. Then we end, we land here, and we say, okay, the new .com would be what's uh, from the old .com would what that would be 900 plus the 50 from this one. Okay. So uh, after having done that. We also want to reset or actually update our domain. Uh, this would be splitting 
domain on a point and we'll only be splitting the we'll be splitting the first one that we find so the first occurrence and we will be getting what's left so if we had for example the, the google.mail.com after splitting would actually have something like this in an array um, yeah. let's have it well I guess it will not not allow me now uh, but I think you, you understand what I mean we'll have it like this and we want the second part and it will always be the second part because we're only splitting once so we're basically creating a two element array always so we're just getting the second part um, so we have split it and we can continue and we will always be updating values into the dict if there is no value we kind of initiate it initialize it if there is a value we update it with more in the end once we are done with that um, we're basically done with our looping throughout the whole thing and now um, basically um, we need to construct our output and for this I can basically have for um, domain in our dict we will have out and we will append and how do we append it we append our uh, a string representation of our um, cp dict Oh, I guess I can actually do something like domain.value, right? Um, not exactly sure, but I think you can do that. We'll see. And this would be the value itself. And then we also want, um, we'll still cast it as a string, although I do, I do think it is a string already, um, the domain itself. And we'll just append all of those and all of their values. Uh, of course, we actually want something like an empty space in between and we can literally just return the result. Now uh, let's let's just see how many things we have to kind of fix before we can continue. <laughs> um, is it okay typo? Let's see. Where is this? Okay. So a string object. Um I guess I'll I'll have to let's see. Uh I guess in this case Oh, um actually domain visit visits in let's how's it called items i think you can actually iterate like this and then i can say visits and then domain i think it was something like this we'll, we'll kind of see um so let's see what did we have wrong in this case i can see okay uh, input output we have the the big one we have the smaller one and i think after the second the last part we are also split right splitting the last one would leave me yeah would definitely leave me with the domain hanging like that okay so i didn't really come up with something elegant i guess would you, you would call it uh that's why i'm just thinking about let's have our let's just have a definition a new a new function that would call that would be basically to we'll say uh update uh, or visit domain and would we'll take something like uh, a domain and Actually, it wouldn't be called domain. 
let's see um, and we will be basically yeah and then we can basically just do this so uh, giving if we give it a domain uh, we can do something like visit domain for a given domain um, and so what we can do with that is basically do our, uh, our update here uh, it will look for for the dictionary it will update the dictionary it will update the visits and at the very end we only do one one more uh, and we actually don't even need to update it but I guess we'll do it anyway visit domain with the domain that we had and um, I guess this would be it I'm not sure why this is in red I guess this would be it like that I'm not sure let's see and the, the rest stays the same out of range yes okay um, that means okay uh, actually uh, we can do this here and in the other case we'll just leave it like that because this is the very last part and we can see I think it was here if you split something that is already that doesn't really contain anything to split you would be left with the same element so in this uh, first case we want to get the second part right because the split is discarded but at the end we don't want to get anything else because it's only one element that's going to be remaining we're not splitting anything and as you can see at least in this example it looks like we got it um, let's quickly get another example like this one let's see how that goes wrong answer I wonder um, my output oh a few moments later I think what we have here is a classic um, case of always look or, uh, look for for the values or the types of values that you're storing and in our case we never actually converted anything um, and I think just because our values kind of state as strings they never actually got calculated as yeah they never actually got understood as digits or integers so we got that right now although in some other order that, that's uh, that was basically left open and I think I, I will be submitting it and uh, let's see how it goes I guess it, yeah it actually ran perfectly fine that's nice um, a lot of things actually to learn here so working with dictionaries when you can pretty useful uh, you're saving yourself a lot of time because uh, this basically gives you access in uh, constant time in the best case scenario or, or linear time in some um, case scenario where you get a lot of um, duplicates or basically not duplicates but uh, where you're hitting the same hash value but uh, that's kind of like it comes into play in some weird edge scenarios like extreme scenarios I guess in this case I don't think it would matter at least for our algorithm um, always useful to, to actually l learn and use more of those dictionaries or hash maps like in Java um, string manipulation splitting strings 
getting i don't know like getting the very first or nth split and then working with the resulting array also nice to have uh, kind of to understand also um just looping through um dictionaries getting like basically working with the with the keys and the values um always keep in mind your data types you can basically define functions and kind of reuse them right it's not the most elegant in this case but you can do that and um, kind of always watch out for whiles like you always have to have a very solid um end scenario when you're doing something like a while loop otherwise you're just gonna be stuck with an endless loop and uh, it's just just uh, not not nice to debug let's put it that way so I think that's it for me. It took me like an hour to actually uh, figure out everything for this problem. It's gonna be a nightmare to actually edit down to meaningful le uh, length and just like the most minimum for meaningful parts. So I'll just be going to do that now. Uh, hope you guys had fun. Hope you learned a lot and see you next time. Bye-bye.